Hey guys, Cody with Princess Craft RV. Come along with me today as we walk through this 2021 Tag XL Boondock. And I'm gonna show you the systems operations on this thing. So come along with me as we check it out. Let's start right up front here uh, with our coupler. We're gonna ride on a two inch ball and we're gonna use our manual tongue jack here to raise and lower the height of this. Once we get our tow vehicle backed underneath it, we're gonna use the tongue jack to lower down onto the ball. Once we get down on it to latch the coupler, we're gonna pick up on the back here and just slide this forward. And we're gonna make sure these little ears right here on the back fall down into those cavities. Once you're there, that's gonna be latched onto the ball. To get it to release, it's just gonna be the opposite. We're gonna pick up and we're gonna slide this backwards and it should stay there and that should be released from the ball. And then again, we can use our manual tongue jack here to crank it up off the ball. A couple other things that do have to hook up to your tow vehicle gonna be our seven way plug here. This is gonna power all of our uh, trailer lights, running lights, turn signals, brake lights, and provide um, electric brakes to the trailer if your tow vehicle is equipped with, an, with a brake controller. Our safety chains are also gonna have to be hooked up. These do need to cross underneath the receiver hitch and clip onto the receiver hitch. And our safety breakaway cable needs to be hooked up to the tow vehicle as well. And this is gonna to need to run on its own path, not through the safety chains, and have its own clip to clip onto the tow vehicle. This is designed to be yanked out of a box that's mounted onto the frame here and apply the brakes on the trailer if you do get completely disengaged from your tow vehicle. Now with your manual tongue jack, once you get this all completely loaded, you will want to remove the wheel here for travel. To do that, we're just gonna pull this pin out and um, undo the pin and pull the pin out and then you can uh, put the wheel either in your uh, propane box here or in your tow vehicle, wherever you'd like to secure that for storage. Now this is equipped with a front storage rack here. You've got storage on both sides. And this little compartment right here is made for a 2000 watt generator, portable generator that you can take that will power this trailer and they fit very nicely right here in that spot. Now this big diamond plate box is gonna house your propane and your battery for the trailer. So to get into it, we're just gonna pull down on these little rubber latches here. And then this lid is gonna be opened up and it's gonna have a gas strut support there. Inside we will find a 20 pound propane cylinder, which can be refilled or exchanged, whichever works best for you. It's just standard style cylinder. Um, to get this thing removed from the trailer, first things first, make sure your service valve is closed. You would take your pigtail off of here for the connection. We're gonna loosen up our wing nut down here. Once we get that loose, then we can lift our propane cylinder out of the trailer. Once this is out, you can now take this and get it refilled or exchanged and then put it back into service. Just remember when you are transporting a cylinder of this style, it does need to be in the upright position. To reinstall it, we're just gonna set it back into the clamp. Then we can reconnect our uh, pigtail back to here and open our service valve if we are ready to continue use. Don't forget to secure your clamp here with the wing nut. Now this just needs to be hand tied. It doesn't need to be over tight. We're just trying to keep the cylinder from moving around. The other thing that we would find in here would be a um, Marine RV deep cycle battery inside of a battery box. It's gonna be an interstate brand from us here at Princess Craft. Now that's gonna not be a maintenance free battery, which means you will need to pop the caps off of it periodically, top off with distilled water as needed. You also have a battery disconnect switch in here that just rotates when this uh, little notch right here is in the green, that's gonna be connected. When it's in the red, that's disconnected. Uh, other than that, this can be used for storing certain items. Um, it's all gonna be mounted in here. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this. All right, over here on the driver's side of the trailer, um, just a couple things. We've got one door on this side. It's gonna have your door hole back. It's gonna be this little like uh, T-snap, if you will. Just push your door all the way back. You'll kind of feel that little pop that's gonna hold it into place there and allow it to stay held back. Um, on the inside of the door, you are gonna have a uh, storage netting and we've got your porthole window covering here that just rotates for privacy and light control. For the door latch, 
It's just gonna be your paddle handle to lock it from, uh, lock it while you're in the inside will be the red handle. Now on the outside, it's gonna be keyed for the paddle handle and a key for the deadbolt. You do have your uh, step here, which is gonna give you access to your roof rack. So you can get up here and load things on top of your Yakima rack. Um, it's got the key locks on here, so this is locked up, but it is adjustable, so you can move it a little bit one way or the other, depending on what you're trying to load up here. Just remember when you do have stuff loaded up here, you do have a roof vent that will you may wanna open, and you've also got solar equipped on this unit. If you've got it covered, it can't do its job. Uh, moving on down, caution, not a step. They don't want you standing on the fender, uh, fender well, so don't stand on that. Wheels and tires, check your pressures, maintain it just like you would on your tow vehicle. Tire pressure, tire size is going to be on this sticker right here. Uh, recommended tire pressure is going to be 50 PSI, and you can see the tire size there as well. So make sure your tires are at 50 on this thing at all times. Uh, check them when they're cold, just like you should on your tow vehicle. Check them before you hit the road. Lug nuts need to be retorqued periodically. We recommend that you do it before you go on each trip. 100 foot pounds on them, perfect torque setting. Moving on back, we do have these little chrome vents, one on each side of the trailer. Now this is gonna be for fresh air for your air conditioner. There is a vent or a fan that needs to be turned on when you're using the air conditioner and that's where all the air is gonna be pulled from, is gonna be through these. Now just below that, we're gonna find your uh, exterior uh, antenna connection. This is gonna be for hooking up an antenna so you can watch TV or park cable. Uh, just below that, we're going to find your 30 amp 110 power connection. Let me show you how this works. Let me get it off of here real quick. So to use that, you can see here we're going to have three slots on the cord. One of them is going to be L-shaped. On the side of the trailer, we're going to have three prongs. One of them is an l shape. We're just going to match up those two that are the l shape. Push that on there. We're going to give the cord just a little twist to the right. That's going to be the initial lock on. And then we're going to use the plastic collar and we're gonna just snug that on there. So we wanna make sure this is good and snug here. We wanna make sure we've got a tight connection so we don't get any overheating or arcing that could cause cord failure or power problems. So just below our uh, power cord, we're gonna find our exterior shower. To get into that, we're just gonna twist this little T-handle and that door is gonna open up and inside we will find your exterior shower with spray nozzle, quick connect fitting. So to get that on, we're gonna push this collar back on here. We're gonna push that quick connect in and that's gonna connect us. And then we are gonna have an adjustable spray nozzle here that we can use. Now this is just a standard water hose fitting on here. You can change this out if you don't like this. It just won't store inside the uh, cubby that it's designed to, but you can put a regular squeeze style sprayer on there if you don't like this one. To get this to release, to get it to release, it's a good idea to relieve water pressure. So you may want to shut your water off for, for a minute, spray this out to relieve the water pressure. And then you're going to slightly push in on the uh, hose, push the collar back, and then this is just going to pop out. Now to store this, it's all going to just kind of coil back in here like so. And then we're going to close that back up. Now that's going to be cold water only. Is, which is all you've got on this trailer. So that's cold water sprayer only. You do have another access uh, step here to get up to the roof of the trailer. Uh, behind our 110 power cord there, we do have your water connections. Uh, on the left is gonna be our city water, I'm sorry, our fresh water fill um, or our potable water uh, that we can carry on board in the fresh water tank and use the water pump to extract. To fill that up, we're just gonna put our water hose into the port there and fill it up until it back washes at us. The connection next to that one is gonna be for our city water connection. This is where we're gonna hook up with our water hose and water pressure regulator to um, this guy right here to uh, make sure we maintain a good uh, water pressure there that New Camp has rated at 50 PSI for this trailer uh, so we don't cause any damages. Now this is gonna be keyed locked, but it does have a little uh, flap right here that you can move out of the way. that will allow you to route your water hose right up in there and make your connection and then lock everything up. Now moving just below the trailer here, 
The rear end of this trailer is gonna be equipped with uh, stabilizer jacks. Now just keep in mind these are stabilizers, they are not levelers. After you get the trailer all level side to side, front to back, then you will run these to the ground. You can use the supplied crank handle. It's just gonna fit right on here and then you're gonna crank them up and down. When you go down to the ground, you just wanna apply a small amount of pressure to them once they hit the ground. Now they do make a quick, quick adapter for these that can go onto a, a drill chuck and allow you to run those down with a power drill versus doing it by hand. While we're down here just next to the stabilizer, we will find our uh, low point drain, uh, which is gonna be this right here, which also drains your fresh water tank. So if you turn that knob right there or that lever, the tank's gonna drain out. Just behind the stabilizer to the back end side, we're gonna find your sink drain connection. You're gonna remove this cap right here. Now this is uh, the standard size of a water hose. You're gonna be able to thread your water hose right onto the fitting there and run your water hose off to a sewer drain or into a portable tote, something like that, that you need to collect your uh, drain water. Now moving around to the back of the 2021 TAG XL here, uh, you can see the uh, solar panel that is installed on this unit up top there. That's gonna help keep the battery charged up on the trailer if you're dry camping. Uh, it's a great option for that. Your little antenna right here is gonna be for your radio. And then uh, getting into our clamshell here, you do have uh, twist locks on both sides. Uh, they need to be facing up and down in order for this to open. And they're also gonna be key lockable. So uh, once we get this opened up, Inside, we will find your sink and your cooktop and your Yeti cooler that come with this uh, trailer. Uh, this does have a light strip that runs across the, uh, the back of the kitchen top here. It's gonna be the switch right over here that says accent light. You also have a light overhead in the actual clamshell that just has a push button on it. Um, now, since the clamshell here does have propane gas going to it, it has a safety feature that's a, an electric valve that's controlled by the opening and closing of the clamshell, which is gonna be this right here. So that actually will, if you forget to turn these off and you close the clamshell, that's gonna uh, electronically shut off the flow of gas to the clamshell area of the trailer. It's a safety feature, don't bypass it. Um, but to use water back here in your kitchen sink, uh, if you're hooked up to city water, we're just going to turn your flow control on, which is going to be this little lever right here. It's going to rotate it one way or the other. If you're dry camping or you're making a roadside stop with potable water, you can use your water pump. You're just going to flip that on. Water pump's going to suck up water out of the fresh water tank and provide you water back here at your sink. Underneath the sink, you will find your fresh water tank, some storage area, and your water pump. It's a good idea to check connections that you can get to easily um, on the water to make sure they don't vibrate loose. Moving over to our two burner cooktop. To get these to light, we're just, obviously you've gotta have propane on the unit, make sure it's turned on. We're gonna rotate the knob to the light position and we're gonna use a stick lighter or a match to light. Uh, once we get it lit, then we can set our flame height and do our cooking. We do have our warning and danger stickers back here about cooking with propane and gas and all that good stuff for your protection. Uh, over here on the right side of the kitchen, we do have your uh, charge station, which is gonna be a 12 volt accessory port with two USBs on there. So you can charge pretty much whatever here. And we've got your GFI outlet there uh, for a wet location. If the red light's on this outlet's trip, that means something has been hooked to it that has caused a power problem and it has tripped. You can push the reset button there to get everything going again. Now moving down, we've in the center here, we do have your high point microwave. It's gonna be a rotary style microwave. Um, it's just a basic microwave. Put your stuff in it, set your time, let it go, do its thing. And back here in the kitchen, we've also got the Yeti cooler that comes with the tag model. This is just a traditional Yeti, so you can store all your stuff in it, put some ice in it, keep things nice and cold for a good period of time. And it just slides into that little cubby there. Now this should pretty much cover everything back here in your clamshell area. Uh, but again, just remember, turn your lights off before you close it. 
make sure your gas is turned off, but if you do forget, by some means, if you close your this down, this will shut off the gas flow to your clamshell. And then we're gonna close this down. Don't forget to turn your latches. And if you would like to, go ahead and lock them to secure your items. All right, moving on to the passenger side of the trailer. Again, we're gonna have another air conditioner vent here. We've got our stabilizer jack on this side. Same thing for our wheels and tires and lugs, our roof access steps. Um, again, don't be standing on the fender well. Door is gonna be hold back in the same. Now, this unit is equipped with a spare tire and it does crank down from underneath the passenger side door. So let me show you where this works from. Now this comes with the supplied three quarter drive wrench here uh, to operate this. And the crank is actually right here behind the step. It's gonna be this uh, bolt head right here basically. We're just gonna, we can put our wrench on there and then you're just gonna crank this up or down depending on which way you need to go. Cable's gonna drop down from underneath. It's gonna be this right here. And it's gonna fit through the wheel and then it'll secure back up underneath the trailer. Now, most of your vehicles today operate on a very similar system and pretty much works just that way. Again, on the inside of the door, we've got your storage netting with your porthole shade. Alrighty, moving inside our 2021 Tag XL boondock here. Uh, just a few things in here. Uh, it's pretty, pretty simple. We do have underfloor storage that goes underneath our mattresses. They just lift up the panels. There's one on each side underneath the mattress. Gives you a decent amount of storage, place to keep stuff. And your headboard, we do have a sliding headboard style. So you do have some storage in here. These panels both slide from side to side. Um, at the top of the headboard, we do have two different things up here. On the driver's side, we're gonna find another charge station with the 12 volt accessory port and the USB. On the passenger side of the trailer, we're gonna find a 110 outlet. We do have cup holders, folding cup holders on both sides that have the expandable rings that fold and store. And then we've got your speakers on both sides. Uh, we've also got your carbon monoxide alarm down here. It's gonna have a nine volt battery in it for power. So check it periodically and replace it as needed. We're gonna have your fire extinguisher here. Biggest thing with the fire extinguisher is gonna be the green button on the top here. Push it down, make sure it pops back up. And that will tell you that you still have uh, pressure in the cylinder and things should be good for operation. Now your little reading lights that are up here, um, they have two modes. They're gonna be white or blue. So off, if you just quick push, they're gonna be blue. If you long press, they're gonna be clear. So you can do the accent blue lighting or do the bright white if you need more light. Uh, a couple little shelves on each side overhead and um, a porch light. There is a porch light switch on each side that just turns the exterior amber porch light on. And then we've got your smoke alarm on this side on the wall. Again, a nine volt battery. Test it and replace as necessary. Now for your windows, they all open the same way. We're gonna have uh, latches that rotate with push locks at the um, on them. And then we're just going to push the window open. Once you figure out how far out you want it, you do need to snug down on these knobs to hold the window open. When you get ready to close it, hold the window, loosen the knobs, and then close it down. Now, all of these windows do have a ventilation uh, step, so they, they're not completely open. So this will be good for maybe rainy days or you just don't want as much breeze blowing through here. You can see on the receivers, they do have a middle section where these latches can go. You would just keep it there and rotate it. And that just leaves enough ventilation to uh, let some fresh air in. When you get ready to travel, make sure that these are closed completely and that all latches are closed. Now, as far as your shades go, you're gonna have a day night shade. Um, gonna be your night shade, your privacy shade here. It's gonna be light darkening and, and keep people from looking into the trailer. Uh, now these will clip together here on this gray clip. If you want to separate them, just lightly pull that back and they will separate. The one coming from the top will be your day shade or your bug screen, if you will, um, for uh, just some light darkening 
to keep a little bit of the sun out. So moving on to the back wall here, we do have some overhead storage on each side of the air conditioner. Um, on the driver's side, we will find your power distribution panel. Inside on the left, you will find your 110 breakers. On the right, you will find your 12 volt fuses. I do recommend picking up and carrying some spare fuses with you. Looks like in here, seven and a half, some 15, a 20, and a 30. So finding a variety pack would probably be a good idea. Got a 110 outlet. And that's gonna bring us to our air conditioner. So for air conditioner operation, we have your cool or your temperature setting, a one through 10 on the top dial. On the bottom dial, we're gonna have a low fan and low cool to the left and high fan and high cool to the right. So before you get around to turning your air conditioning on this fit switch that says AC fan needs to be in the on position. And then we're just gonna turn this on to high cool, low cool, or fan, whichever you wanna have it on. And then we're gonna have air blowing out and we'll start to cool. Now you can slightly control airflow direction with the vanes up here in the top. Um, and that's really about it with the air conditioner. When you're not using it, you can have the AC fan off. On this side over here, um, you will be able to access the filter. You may need a little small tool to help pull that out of there, but you can pull it out from this side give it a cleaning um, and then let it dry before you put it back in. Over the air conditioner, we're gonna have another compartment. It's gonna have a little push latch on it. Just push it in, that's gonna unlatch it and allow this to open. Inside, we will find your outlet for your air conditioner. It's kind of got its own GFI setting on it there. So you may need to reset that to keep the air conditioner working. And then you'll see another plate up there that says TV prep. So there's some wires and stuff back in there that are prepped for installing a television. Now over on the passenger side, we will find your um, heater and it's got a off, low and high position. Now it's also got a thermostat, thermostatically controlled outlet, which is done with this remote that's provided. Um, it just takes a battery and then you can set your desired temperature. Instead of having to turn the heater on and off, you set what your desired room temperature is and the outlet itself physically turns on and off to turn the space heater on and off. So it's pretty cool. Uh, next to that, we're gonna find your Jensen um, Entertainment Center, if you will. It's got an HDMI port on it, so you can uh, hook to it uh, for that. It's got USB. Uh, you can Bluetooth connect to it for your phone, for streaming music. Um, kind of does everything you'd expect it to in a very small package. Overhead, we're gonna find your powered vent fan. Um, it's just gonna crank open. And you're gonna have a switch on here for determining direction, whether you want air in or out of the trailer. And then we've got a zero through three speed setting, so you can decide what speed you would like. Um, and then when you're done using it, you can just crank it down. Uh, now this uh, vent fan is prepped for a vent cover. It's very easy install, just sits over it and takes a couple of pins to keep it in place. So it's a very quick and simple install um, and it'll allow you to keep this open even during some rain. So it's very nice to have. Um, and then on our passenger side for our other switches, we will find our ceiling light switch, which is gonna be our lighting that goes around the ceiling accent. And that is gonna be our lighting for the inside of the trailer. And I think that pretty much covers everything on the inside of our 2021 Tag XL Boondock. All right, everybody, thanks for coming along with me today as we went through the 2021 New Camp Tag XL Boondock. I think I've got everything covered, but if I've missed anything, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can call us, text us, email us, whatever works best for you. And again, this is Cody with Princess Craft RV.